everybody, it's me, as always, your host, Gamma896, and I am back with first in the new series of videos, and that is a subscriber and viewer request video review. And this first review is going out to uh, Clone Commander Jack, one of my subscribers, who has asked me to review Danny Ketch, Classic Ghost Rider Volume 1. So, before I get into this review, just a quick note. If you want to put, if you're a viewer or a subscriber and you haven't put a request in, I'll put a link to my viewer request uh, video and you can check out the video and basically see what that video is about. But anyway, on to the review. So like I said, this is the review that Cl Clone Commander Jack has requested and that is Danny Ketch Classic Ghost Rider Volume 1. So, series is, this series is written by Howard Mackey and it's illustrated by Javier Saltares and Mark Tech's area, and it, as you can see from the top right corner, it's published by Marvel. So this first, I first volume collects the first ten issues of the 1990s Ghost Rider series, which is the first debut of Danny Ketch as the Ghost Rider. So, like I said, the story follows the title character of Danny Ketch, and we basically open the story with Danny and his sister Barbara, just bear with me, and I'll, there we are, as you can see, there's our first look at Danny and Barbara, basically walking through a, t a cemetery on Halloween, and <coughs> uh, they come across a shady deal with some of the Kingpin thugs, who made his first appearance in The Amazing Spider-Man issue 50, uh, way back when, and... We also get uh, another um, Crime Lords thugs also present at this deal called uh, Death Watch, who makes his first appearance in issue two of this trade. So basically, we get Danny and his sister Barbara basically accidentally making some noise, interrupting the deal, and this leads to a shootout where the two gangs feel that with one side is double across the other, and in the ensuing shootout, Barbara gets shot and wounded, and Danny Ketch finds a motorcycle in the junkyard, which looks absolutely brand new, and he feels that it shouldn't be there, but as you can see, um, and as I'll probably tell you in a minute, this motorcycle has a symbol of a skull on the fuel cap, and as you can see, hopefully from the artwork, um, Danny begins his transformation, into the Ghost Rider when he touches the skull symbol on the fuel tank that's glowing with the blood of Barbara on his hands as he tries to help her, obviously as she's been shot and she's wounded. So here we have our first look at Danny Ketch as the Ghost Rider and this just looks absolutely fantastic. I really, really like the art in this. I'll get onto the art a little bit more uh, later in the review, but here we have, like I said, the first appearance of Danny Ketch as the Ghost Rider, and this motorcycle that he's riding, believe it or not, actually can't be destroyed. And this is actually shown later on in the story. So, um, basically, the Ghost Rider, you know, um, uh, one of the first things he says is that um, uh, I am the Ghost Rider, the spirit of vengeance, and he says that... Um, you know, no more innocent blood shall be spilt. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll reap vengeance on those who have spilled innocent blood. So here we have Danny basically beating up some of the thugs that were involved in the shootout where Barbara got hurt, or Ghost Rider, I should say. Um, do, 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 do. Anyway, um, going briefly back to the deal for a moment. Uh, the deal uh, that Danny and Barbara accidentally interrupted. Um, were uh, for some canisters of, at this point in the story, an unknown substance, but when the kingpin is involved, it can't be good. Here we have some more of the artwork with Danny, or Ghost Rider, riding his motorcycle through the city, and basically going to do his solemn duty, which is to obviously reap vengeance on those who have spilled in some blood, or harmed the innocent. Um... <coughs> Ah, uh, where are we? Just bear with me one minute, guys. And... Um... And I'll... 
just move my notes down so I can just keep on track in this review of where I am. Just bear with me, guys. So, Barbara, unfortunately, winds up in a coma after the shootout, and Danny obviously feels responsible for his sister's current predicament, and he goes to he wants to use the Ghost Rider to basically hurt the people that hurt his sister, which I'm sure if there's anybody out there with siblings who have ever got hurt, I'm sure they can find that aspect of Danny Ketch's character relatable. Here we have a first look at the Kingpin doing a, uh, a martial arts uh, lesson or training um, to further his, uh, his combat skills and his strength. Um, I really, really like the Kingpin character. I really like the... Um, the, I can't remember the guy who voiced the Kingpin in the 1990s Spider-Man, the animated series, but I thought the look of the Kingpin in that was really cool. And um, here we have Danny, once again, undertaking his second transformation as the Ghost Rider. And basically, like I said, going to reap vengeance on, again, here's a really cool shot of... Ghost Rider um, going to avenge the innocent by trying to f and finding the time to pull a wheelie on his motorcycle. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. So, um, we get, uh, like I said, we get the first appearance of of, um, of Blackout uh, in this story. Here's a great shot of a little fight scene between Ghost Rider and some thugs. And he can really kick some ass, in all fairness. And, of course, being made of... of um, obviously, being uh, essentially a skeleton uh, made up of hellfire, then, you know, he's not easily put down or can't easily be defeated. And here we have a great shot of the right-hand panel of this left page of the Ghost Rider's eyes. Hopefully you can see it flashing red using his own supernatural power, which is the, uh, the pen and stare, where he can make... Anyone evil who has harmed the innocent basically feel all the pain that they've inflicted onto others, which I have to admit is a pretty cool power. Here we have a first shot of Blackout, who's the guy in the suit, um, who you can see there where my index finger, index finger is. And underneath, in the next panel, we have a first appearance of Blackout. Blackout and Deathlock both make their first appearance in this second issue. I think Blackout is kind of like a vampire kind of character. Um, I don't know exactly, but it's heavily implied that he is some sort of vampire. Um, again, here we have a great fight scene between uh, between Blackout and Ghost Rider. Um, I think Blackout becomes, uh, from what I've understood, from what I've, from what I've, uh, from what research I've done, I understand that um, uh, Blackout becomes a reoccurring enemy of, um, of Ghost Rider. Whether or not he shows up in the, the Ghost Rider series where Johnny Blaze is the um, is Ghost Rider, I'm not sure. Here's a great cover by John Kaliz, I believe is how you pronounce it. K-A-L-I-S-Z. I I'll probably mispronounced that name so badly, but anyway... Here's a great cover of issue 3 of a tussle between Ghost Rider and Blackout. Uh, the reason why I'm probably showing off a bit more artwork than I normally do, um, I went back to my other reviews and I thought I should do a little bit more of the artwork and just show you what the artwork is actually like in the future reviews that I do. Here we have again another shot of the Kingpin in his classic white suit, which he always tends to wear. Um, the Kingpin is, he's not a, he's not an, an om, he's not a, he's not a threat throughout this book, but he's kind of like Sauron in Lord of the Rings, where he is a threat, but he doesn't make kind of direct contact with Ghost Rider. Um, what else do I want to say? Um, just bear with me, guys. Uh, we also have, later on in this story, we have a face-off between Ghost Rider and Mr. Hyde, who some of you might know from the Jekyll and Hyde um, various stories and uh, movies that 
Dr. Jackal and Mr. Hyde have appeared in. Um, I know he made an appearance in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen with Sean Connery. A really, really bad example, I know. Um, but, yeah, that's one of the most recent um, uh, examples I can draw from. Um, I say the most recent. I mean, I watched that movie a, a few years ago and I didn't like it all that much. Um, here we have a great shot of Ghost Rider's motorcycle that seems to basically appear whenever Danny or Ghost Rider has need of it, which is pretty cool. Um, also, this bike can obviously scale up buildings, as is off, as is showcased in this um, this story. Um, uh, over the course of the story, we get to see Danny basically struggle with the Ghost Rider power. And he comes to the realization that, or what he thinks is a realization, that ever since the night that his sister got hurt, or Barbara was put into a coma, um, after the events of the shootout in the first issue, because um, like I said, this reprints the first ten issues of the series, uh, Danny obviously blames himself, and for, for the most part blames Ghost Rider for his current predicament. Um, but he comes to, he, he even gets to the point where he obviously he doesn't know much about the Ghost Rider power in general and he um, even gets to the point where he tries to get rid of the motorcycle but he finds that, you know, while Ghost Rider might not be the friendliest of, of superheroes essentially or anti-heroes, whichever light you choose to see Ghost Rider in really and to be honest, from what I've shown you guys and what I've read um, from the dialogue and, and the, the artwork and the fight scenes and just the... Uh, the kind of the, the standing up for the people who possibly can't possibly can't stand up for themselves, who who, who won't maybe because because of, because they're afraid. I mean, Ghost Rider, you can argue he's an anti-hero or an e a hero of sorts, or you can argue that he's a modern saint trying to you know to um, to uh, um stand up for the underdogs, for the, pe for, the, for the downtrodden people, so to speak. At least that's what I got from, from this kind of, from reading the dialogue and the story and whatnot. Here we have a, a great cover again by John, by John, uh, I've forgotten his name already, um, John Carles, or Carles, um, of the Ghost Rider facing off against the Punisher, or Frank Castle, who made his first appearance in comics in The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 130. Um, so, I'm not going to go any more into the story, but, I mean, the, this is just a really, really great book. I mean, you have, uh, you have, a, you have Scarecrow making an appearance in this story as well. Um, I'm not going to say when or how, but let's just say that the ending to the, to the, to that issue is really, um, it's quite a shocking ending, really. Um, we get a shot of Danny and Ghost Rider basically kind of a dream sequence where Danny and Ghost Rider are in hell and Danny is basically confronting the Ghost Rider for all the um, all the terrible events that have happened in his life since the first issue um, when Barbara was obviously wounded um, and basically Ghost Rider tells him you know it's not my fault I tried to help you but you know, you fight too much, you know, I need full control over you. And of course, Danny being kind of strong-willed, he tries not to, but we also get the, um, the appearance of the old X-Factor team. Um, I believe this might have been from the 90s, I don't know who the X-Factor team was during the 90s, but I think we had, uh, we had Beast, Cyclops, Bobby Draco, Iceman, and Jean Grey, who at this point is called Marvel Girl. And there's also, like I said, there's another great cover by John Kellys or Kellys of Ghost Rider and Archangel and Beast. And we also have the Morlocks show up in this issue as well. Um, and finally, um, what happens in the previous issue? Um, we have another enemy of Ghost Rider show up. Again, I'm not going to tell you what goes on in the issue, but here we have another great cover of the Ghost Rider basically standing on his own under his, um, obviously the logo. Um, I really like these old, these older, uh, um, comic covers. I think they've got kind of a nostalgic kind of value to them. 
and they just look really cool as well. Um, I mean, you know, you get the, um, hang on, I mean, on these old ones, you get the, you get the, the cover price for the issue, which was um, a dollar and fifty cents. I don't know how much that would be in British pounds, but and we also get the date of which the, the issue was released. Uh, this one was in uh, February 10th in, um, in uh, I'd imagine, in, in, in 19, in, in sometime in the 90s. Um, I'm not sure when, but um, we also get the... Um, actually, what I'll do is I'll put a link to, to a documentary about the history of the comic book industry. And I don't know whether you'll be able to see it. If I put it right up close to the camera, you can see one of the symbols is, uh, I think it's next to the date, where you can see it's being approved by the, uh, by the, comic, by the Comics Code Authority. And I'll put a link to an interesting video which gives an overview of the, um, of the comic book industry when it first started out. And it does go into the, um, the, comic, the Comics Code Authority uh, during that video. I'll put a link to that because it, it's a really interesting um, documentary on, on the comic book industry in general. Um, anyway, um, I'm getting kind of off topic here. Uh, sorry about this, guys. Um, so, overall, this is a really great read. I've really enjoyed this. Um, like I said, great read, great storytelling, great character moments, great dialogue. Um, there's good artwork. Um, the artwork, I personally really like. Um, let me see if I can find you a final example of the artwork. Um, uh, I mean, the artwork for the most part, I mean, it kind of reminds me a little bit of, here we have, uh, um, yeah, let me show you this, uh, this side of the artwork, again, this is the issue where Danny confronts Ghost Rider in hell, and here we have Danny basically holding his, um, the Ghost Rider skull and, and talking to him, uh, kind of reminds me a little bit, um, actually, right, let me get back on point, the artwork kind of reminds me a little bit of the John Constantine uh, Hellblazer Original Sins artwork. I believe by Rick Veitch, V I no V E I T H. I believe. I think Veitch is how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. Um, I put a link to the Hellblazer Original Sins uh, review of my first trade of Hellblazer, which is the first of Jamie Delano's run, which is Original Sins. I put a link to that video as well, so you can see. If you watch this, obviously, if you watch this review, and then you watch the Hellblazer review afterwards, I do go into the artwork, and I do show you guys some of the artwork in that story, and maybe you can kind of see the similarities. Um, there's also this scene with Danny and Go the Ghost Rider Skull kind of reminded me a little, a little bit of uh, Papa Midnight in um, John Constantine Hellblazer Original Sins, where he's, I believe he's holding his sister, his deceased sister's skull, and talk into her. Um, I just thought that was kind of a funny, uh, nostalgic moment of kind of a little comparison between um, Ghost Rider and, um, and John Constantine Hellblazer. Um, so like I said, overall I really enjoyed this. 4.5 out of 5. Um, just a quick um, thank you to uh, Clone Commander Jack for putting this request in. So, Jack, I hope you... I don't know whether that's your real name or what, but I'll just shorten it to Jack or Clone Commander Jack. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and, like I said, thank you very much for putting in um, a request for um, for a video review. So, anybody else who's watched this and Clone Commander Jack, hope you've enjoyed this review of Danny Ketch, Danny Ketch, Classic Ghost Rider Volume 1. So, until next, actually, let me just... Um, one more thing, and then I'll end this review. Sorry, guys, I've just, compl I've just looked around. I just remembered i got to show you guys this. If you're wondering where I got all the information from about the, the first appearances of uh, the Kingpin, uh, Punisher, um, Danny Ketch as Ghost Rider, um, all the other stuff, um, I got it from this big encyclopedia, which is the Marvel Chronicles. Uh, Marvel Chronicle Encyclopedia. This is basically a year-by-year -year history of the Marvel Universe and the characters within the Marvel Universe, um, all the way from... 1939 all the way up to um, 
all the way up to, up to 2008, I believe. So it's a little bit out of date. Um, or if, it's not out of date, but a little, uh, little bit behind as we've had. Um, obviously, we're in 2012 now, but I believe a new issue or a new um, edition of this encyclopedia has been put out um, recently. But unfortunately, um, I well, not unfortunately, but I don't have that that version, the newest version anyway. Unfortunately, because I was given this uh, version as a birthday present by my stepfather actually um, last Christmas for my uh, or, well my birthday is three days after Christmas for anybody who's really interested in that kind of thing but um, but yeah um, hang on guys just bear with me one sec yeah it, it is from yeah the encyclopedia is from 1939 up until uh up until 2008. Let me see if I can... Oops. I don't want to bend the page. So let me just see if I can hold up one of the pages and show you. It's quite a heavy book, no fairness, considering it's a hardback. And uh, I need to do one thing for... Um, <laughs> uh, I need to do one thing as that, because um, uh, Comstant Bromstar or Scott does this with his archive. So uh, as you can see, this book is a hardback. <laughs> I just thought I'd do that for, uh, for Comstant Bromstar or Scott. Um, it was a really great review. I'll put a link to Scott's channel as well. Um, so um, hopefully you guys saw the um, saw the the pages then that I tried to show you. Um, again, let me see if I can show you another example of a page. Hopefully you can see this okay. Um, you won't be able to see much of the text, but because obviously it's quite far from the camera. But um, if there's anybody who's new to getting into comics or the Marvel universe in general or the DC Universe, actually. Um, and I actually think there's a Vertigo Encyclopedia as well. Anybody who's getting into comics or into the Marvel Universe, the DC Universe, or the Vertigo Universe, which is the, um, or the Vertigo books, which is the adult line of DC Comics, there's two, no, there's three encyclopedias out. There's this one, um, which is the Marvel Chronicles Encyclopedia. There's the DC Universe Enci Encyclopedia. And there's a Vertigo uh, encyclopedia as well. I'll put a link to not only to this book that I reviewed, obviously being the first volume of Danny, Ke Danny Ketch class classic Ghost Rider in the description for anybody who's interested. I'll also put a link to um, to the Marvel, the DC, and also the Vertigo Encyclopedia if I can find it at a reasonable price for you guys because I think the Vertigo Encyclopedia is either becoming quite hard to get hold of or is becoming quite pricey. So either way, I'll put a link to the Marvel and the DC Universe Encyclopedia. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to end this review. So until next time, guys, this is Scambit896 signing off. As always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've read this book and you want to give me your own thoughts and opinions, put a comment below in the comment section. Or if you're going to get into this book, Again, put a comment below. If you've got this book, put a link in the description telling me what you think. Or if you're going to pick this up or you're interested, again, I'd really like, like to know what you guys think. So put a comment below in the comment section. And um, as always, if this is your first time here um, and you want to see more from me in the near future, by all means, click that subscribe button at the top of the screen. So until next time, this is Scambit896 signing off, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, guys.